What's up everybody, I'm IGP and welcome back to Subnautica. Today guys, we're going to talk about a few updates to the game. Obviously one regarding the prison or the primary containment facility. The devs are working very hard towards the end game. There's been some updates to the Sea Emperor, animations, and how the story is going to play out once you reach the aquarium. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy that. But first, we're going to take a look at yet another overhaul to the Cyclops, the game's best submarine so i know i've been posting a lot of subnautica lately i hope that doesn't bother you guys i think i'm starting to get just a little bit too excited for this game to finish nervous as well anyway if you guys are still enjoying the series be sure to hit that like button let me know in the comment section below and let's go ahead and get started i'm gonna jump right into the cyclops here wow you know i am so distracted lately by all the the amazing details of the sea emperor and the end game and the rockets and and all that, but I failed to realize that there's a there's a family of stalkers that swim. Look at the little baby. He's like he's a he's growing. He's a growing boy thing. He can't be a boy in this world because everything's asexual. But damn, you gotta appreciate the small things sometimes. I'm actually kind of excited, and by kind of I mean very excited to start a full playthrough of this game once it's done. You know what? I don't think we ever gave a proper name to this dude. We need to have a proper name. We got Susie Q, but we need a name for this guy. Let me know in the comment section below what you think is a good name. Okay, so the updates to the Cyclops. I have a bare Cyclops here. We're, we, we don't have any upgrades or anything installed just yet. As you can see here, everything looks pretty much the same. Pilot the sub and you'll see that all the stuff pops on the screen. Obviously, we've had our health. We've seen this all before. We have our health, our noise level, uh, our meters and power. And then over here, we have an extra thing called rig for silent running. Now, this was a feature on this side that used to have the three different speeds or four, I think. Actually, I can't even remember now. There might have been the very silent one, which reduces your your noise level to basically nothing. And you can drive around and, you know, emit the least amount of noise and not get eaten by giant creatures. But now it is a temporary buff, which I have no idea how long it lasts, but it's for a while. And you can actually operate at full speed while silent running in order to escape or get out of a situation you don't want to be in. Now, in order to do anything, because obviously you can't right now, you have to click this. Powering up. Which sounds amazing. Now, once the engines are started, you'll see the noise meter is adjusted to whatever you have it set to. So this is standard speed. A head slow. This is a head slow. A head standard. The standard. And a head flank. A head flank. Emergency speed. Emergency speed. And as you can see, the noise increases as you move, but then you also have an idle level of noise, which can create a problem before you can just get off of the pilot seat and it will still be in the same setting. And then what that will do is emit noise and you can be attacked while you're standing still. So what you need to do now is just like in your car, take out the keys. It, you're not invisible. You obviously can still be attacked, but it's less, much less likely. I don't really know the detailed statistics on that. But now once we have the engines started and it powers up, which is an awesome effect, by the way, uh, we can have full speed and rig for silent running. And there you go. Look at the noise meter. There's nothing being emitted and we can go full speed to escape out of dangerous situations. And then as you can see there, the engine can possibly overheat. You keep going and it says the temperature is critical and now so the, the the buff of the silent running is pretty temporary it's not too long but it's just enough to get out of those situations and now we have been driving on the on the highest setting for way too long and it makes the place blow up in flames possibly explode right and the music is pretty awesome when this happens this is the same music i believe that's in the escape pod uh when you first start up the game if you don't skip that section it's pretty awesome so the flank option is definitely there for emergencies you should always be going standard okay so i'm going to power down the engine and we're going to go take a look at the upgrades that you can build on deck so if you guys didn't see the last episode there is a console now inside of every cyclops you make that has a fabricator just for the cyclops itself the MK1 hull module. We also have the engine efficiency module, the shield generator, the sonar upgrade, which is different than the sonar that we already have on the ship. This is the one that shoots out and can detect terrain. The docking bay repair module, which we've seen. The fire suppression system, which is an automatic thing. And you don't have to worry about running around with a fire extinguisher. And then, of course, the Cyclops decoy. 
Now here you can activate the sonar and you can activate the Cyclops shield defense system. Now, one of the best things that's been added to the Cyclops since the implementation of this new system is what's called an overshield. That's this blue portion of the health bar. Think Halo the original Halo. Again, I make a lot of comparisons to Halo, but the original one had an armor that can be depleted, and then you had a set amount of health that is then damaged or ticked away at once the armor is depleted. However, it can be regenerated. From what I have read and what the devs have said, if you keep your health above 80% on the Cyclops, then the overshield will prevent any damage done to the Cyclops, and in addition, regenerate itself. If you are below that threshold, the 80%, then the overshield will not regenerate until you fix the damages to the Cyclops. The prevention and damage also prevents holes from being made in the exterior, so you don't always have to go out and constantly use your welder to repair the ship. Now, I'd imagine that this would act as a separate meter, but it doesn't seem like it does. It seems more like it is 10% of the bar, and that 10% is your wiggle room for damage. So basically, if a stalker were to ram your ship, it would do some damage, but then it will regenerate and prevent any further damage in the future. This is helpful when you're just passing through somewhere, you happen to run into terrain, or you happen to pass by a hostile creature that you don't really want to engage in combat. It's a pretty awesome feature, and it does tackle that very issue I had last time we checked out the updates, where I felt like every time I was hit, I had to leave my Cyclops and fix a hole. Now, I don't know if they plan on upgrading or allowing upgrades for the overshield in the future, but it seems like something they could play around with. So to put it to the test, I'm going to change over to survival. And that also means apparently the Aurora is going to explode. Great. All right, so we're going to start up the engine. Powering up. Sweet. And we're gonna take a look at the damage. See if we can get a stalker to attack us. I actually don't know where we are anymore. Let's actually just run into the wall, see what it does. There we go. Okay, so that had to have done some damage. Yeah, there you go. So there's a little bit, and you can see it slowly recharges. That's actually really fast. Okay, so I'm going to full charge slam into this uh, this nice little reef back here and see how much damage we can do. Did that do any damage? I don't even think so. Oh, it did. It definitely did. All right, so we're going to back out and then run into it again <laughs> since there doesn't seem to be any uh, stalkers around to attack me. You know what? I got a better idea. I got a better idea. Let's have some fun. We haven't done this in a long time. And I'm probably going to die doing this, but that's okay. Woo! All right, leaving. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, what is he attacking? Oh, is it me? Is it me? I can't tell. Oh, yep, it's me. All right, so he's... Yep. Wow, that's actually very creepy. No, hurry up and attack me, dude. My shields are gonna recharge. What's wrong with you? Oh, he almost got it. He almost got it. Okay, there we go. So now we have some damage. The the overshield is depleted. So those are the updates to the Cyclops that I'm aware of. There might be some other things that I might have skipped over, and I do apologize for that. So let's go to the prison and check out some of the latest updates to the Sea Emperor and the endgame. Ooh. Ooh. You seek, want to help you. That is awesome. Okay, so the image that used to be used was the Mesmer effect, and now it seems like it's been updated to be some kind of ripple slash like, you know, a, a bend in time, some kind of wormhole communication from the Sea Emperor. I actually really enjoy that. It almost seems like it was an image of the Sea Emperor stretched out because there's these green lines. It looks like kind of like its eyes are being stretched and it's, maybe it is the face, it's just highly distorted. I don't know. Anyway, let's go inside. So a major update to the antechamber, and I say major because it's a big deal, has to do with the relics. So as you approach the relics, you can hear sounds. It's actually quite creepy. Now, all of the containers or the displays make this subtle sound, but some of the artifacts themselves make their own noises. And I'm going to get rid of this guy because you're making way too much noise and it's kind of annoying me. Get out of here. God, where's the other one? Where are these guys? Ruining my experience and the experience of the people. Okay. I think we are free and clear of excess noise. 
Oh, that's... Whoa. Hello? I did not ever see that before. Holy crap. All right. Wait. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's a... That's a strange sound. So the relics are very much aware of my presence, it would seem. Or if it's just an added effect <laughs> to make us be like, ooh, shiny objects. What about this one? Yeah, half of these things seem incredibly unstable. Yeah, some of them are just making the standard buzz noise. This one's not making anything. This is the one with the nanobots, right? Yeah, capable of infiltrating a foreign body and deconstructing it from the inside. That's fantastic. Yeah, it doesn't seem like any of these over here have any special sounds. It's more of just the constant hum. Anyway, on to the aquarium. So as soon as we walk into the this area here, we can see that the that little teleporter up there now has the effect of a normal activated teleporter, which we don't have to do anything for. Again, I still haven't figured out the purpose of this one. I do know it connects to the bottom of the aquarium in the back. It just teleports you up here, but I'm not sure the purpose of that. Three entrances to the aquarium. You can go in here, you can go in the moon pool, or you can go in the warp gate from the, uh, the quarantine enforcement platform. I'm not sure what it's for. If you know, let me know. But here we are. Check this shit out. still love it and I don't know if you guys noticed but that is the Emperor's head just being highly distorted it looks like it's sitting in front of some kind of precursor structure maybe something like this and its antennas are being spread and distorted that's why it's green and it's communicating with us it's beautiful good observation on my part probably everyone else was like well duh how did you not figure that out already Oh, and if you're wondering why you're not hearing the normal music that you would hear in the aquarium is because for some reason it's not actually queuing up uh, when I get inside here. So I just turn the music off and add my own for dramatic effect. Hopefully it helps. So let's go through the sequences again and we'll be able to see a lot more of the Emperor and how it's going to play out. Yep. The sitting sound. <laughs> just that subtle effect makes everything seem more fluid and real all right so i'm assuming here i have to insert the fuel crystal just maybe Ooh. what happened i don't want to i don't want to hatch them just yet i messed up last time hello aren't you supposed to talk to me let me scan this stuff real quick nothing okay it's just looking straight at the warp gates i guess i gotta go up there it might i hope i don't miss a trigger there we go Well, thank you. That sound is actually nothing as I expected. It's actually kind of crazy because we had those five sounds that the Emperor was supposed to be making that was actually in the game at some point, and now I don't hear a trace of them at all. It actually seems like the Emperor is now making different noises, which suits it more. That, like, dolphin... Uh, like, I don't even know how else to describe it. It sounds something like a dolphin, like a low-toned dolphin. Oh, wow. Please calm down. Let me scan this real quick. Are you gonna talk to me? I thought you were supposed to- My oh. young want to hatch, to play outside this place. We have been here so long. The others had ways of giving passage to the outside. I asked them for this, but they could not hear. If you can hear, you can help. If you can help. I will tell what the others wanted so badly to know. Okay. Well, I think I was supposed to actually scan this first and 
that's why it's pointing at it. Obviously, we're going to scan it if we're playing the game. We're like, hey, what the hell is this? Let me find out. And then it tells me that. And now I insert the crystal, and there you go. You gave me what I asked for. I give you what you seek. My young cannot be forced from their shells. They must be coaxed. This is what the others could not see. I give you this secret willingly. I hope I will not be disappointed again. Yes. Now, I... I feel like if you just scrunched your body up, you could potentially go in this. Now, the way this teleporter works... No, actually, never mind. I'm just kidding. But the way this teleporter works, it seems like, you know, if you touch it, you get teleport... Your entire person gets teleported so if you just touch your fin wouldn't your entire being get teleported or would only your fin get teleported and then you're some kind of disfigured ripped apart just entered a black hole kind of entity i don't know so let's go down continue on the story here and insert the hatching enzymes so i'm not actually sure where i'm going to get the hatching enzymes from i'm assuming it's going to be in the lab above the antechamber or behind and above the antechamber the dissected one maybe Maybe there's a, an enzyme we would grab there. But I just always cheat mine in. Hey, beautifuls. How goes it? My young are swimming for the shallows. I thank you. Their freedom is my end. Perhaps next we meet, I will be an ocean current. I will carry seeds to new lands or a creature so small, it sees the gaps between the grains of sand. Farewell, friend. <sighs> My life is complete. Okay, so the Emperor juveniles are now sitting here like this, mainly because they are going to be programmed to go through the teleporter. Once they are through the teleporter, they will then swim to different locations, and because this isn't the end game, there are five separate locations in which the juveniles will actually be swimming around in. And I'll show you that in just a second, but let's talk about how we're supposed to get cured. Now, we know that the Sea Emperor is not in a stable state or doesn't produce a stable form of the Enzyme 42 that we're supposed to use to get a cure. Instead, the slight potency of the enzyme that the Sea Emperor is emitting is being used in conjunction with the peepers traveling in and out of the pipes to spread enough to be able to keep life uh, you know or the bacterium at bay on the surface in these different biomes you're still going to have infected creatures because it's just not enough to fully cure however the emperor juveniles do have enough to cure entirely now those balls right up there those yellow enzyme balls which were in the game at some point and i and i saw this last episode i saw the emperor was emitting them those are going to be the purest form of it, in which we can actually collect as a player and use on ourselves to cure ourselves and then continue on the story. The Emperor, I believe, is not supposed to be emitting those. Instead, you can kind of see the trail. I don't know at what point it comes out, but there's a trail that the Emperor leaves uh, that is supposed to be similar to what the Peepers are leaving behind, which is just a, just a slight trail of enzyme and stuff. There you go. There's a little bit of it right there. That's the amount of enzyme that the Emperor is supposed to be leaving out. Those balls are actually going to be produced by these guys. So I don't know if these guys are going to swim through the teleporter, go to their designated biomes, and then emit these things around. And then we have to go and find them and collect them, which would add a whole new level of, uh, of play there, because then we have to go find these things. Or if they're going to emit them inside the prison. I do know, however, if you go through the warper gates or the warp gates and come back they won't be here and i don't think we can do anything with the ball just yet no we can run into it but it doesn't matter we're still pretty infected scan. vital signs normal detecting trace amounts of foreign bacteria continuing to monitor so we're going to go through here they're just standing there i guess waiting to be programs we're going to go through the gate and we end up on the other side. Now, if we were to go back, they're not going to be there. However, let's do this. You can actually do this if you're in experimental or believe maybe stable. I think you can use the console in stable, right? Let's just say experimental just to be on the safe side. You open up the console and type in go to then juvenile emperor one. And then you get teleported to an area where 
one of the five emperors are going to be located or swimming around giving off this enzyme. Now you could do the same all the way up to five. We go to two and now we're in the Kush or what is it called again? I think they changed the name, right? The bulb zone or something like that. I actually don't, please don't arrest me. Third one, we are in the Grand Reef, obviously. And now I'm gonna actually check. Are they, sw are they swimming around here yet? I, I don't know. It's such a big area. It's likely not. There's the sea treaders over there, which is hella creepy. I don't think they're around here just yet. I'm not even gonna waste my time. That's fine. Now, the fourth one is at the entrance to the blood kelp zone. For some reason, they went out here. I'm not sure. For some reason, one of them decided this was a good place to go. And the last one is in the crag field. I haven't been to the crag field in forever. But that's it. Those are the latest updates to the aquarium, the prison experience the Emperor experience, whatever you want to call it. The animations look great. The sound effects have added so much more depth to that whole thing. Good times, good times. Anyway, stay tuned for more updates to Subnautica. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Like, share, favorite, and subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date with all my latest videos. I love you all, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.